Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Ixalan, is it worth it? And we're going to take a look at all the rares. I'm on Star City Games. So Star City Games tends to be much more expensive, especially pre-ordered than other places. But they guarantee to deliver your pre-order, so there's that. Instead of ordering from a shady eBay account, you are guaranteed to get the card. So let's take a look. Arcane is two fifty. Blood fast is three dollars. Asses is two. Bishop is a dollar. As you can see, the foils are where the value is at, which is not typical of a normal set, especially foil bulk cards. Foil bulk or is just that. It's just foil bulk. So. Blood Craze Paladin is two bucks. Uh, Burning Sun's Avatar is two bucks. Captain Landry Storm is two bucks, and Captivating Crew is a dollar. Again, this is retail. This is pre-order. These prices will actually mostly plummet. You're not. This is the most expensive you're going to see of many of these cards. Just as a percentage, maybe a few of them do go up in price after seeing some GP play but the large majority of them will drop down to oblivion. You have Conqueror's Galleon. As you can see, there's a very big difference here between the dollar non-foil and the $10 foil. You have Daring Saboteur, Dead Eye Tracker at $1 and $2, and Death Gorge Scavenger at $2, which the foil is $8. Hmm. This is a very interesting set. I mean, the foils are very pricey for kind of bad cards, in my opinion, and the non-foils are very cheap. And there's not there's not many pack scenarios where you get your value, right? So you have Deep Root Champion, which is a buck and five dollars foil. You have the Dagger, which is six dollars, but twenty five dollars foil. And Dragon Skull Summit, which is 250, but you can buy any of the numerous uh, previous versions for much less. And Dream Call of Siren, which is $1.50. So the Drowsing Dagger, I mean, is that really $25 foil? But you're not going to get a foil. Getting a specific foil, rare or mythic, just very, the odds are incredibly low. Like just not, not even worth talking about. So next we have Catacomb at four, Vanguard at 50 cents, which even as a pre-order, you don't really see that many cards at 50 cents as a pre-order in Star City Games, but here you see one. And this it's kind of, it deserves to be there. Um, Entrenching Melody, which is two bucks. Uh, the Fleet Captain, which is two bucks. Again, if you're gonna pay MSRP, let's say $4 and some chains, $4 and like 19 cents, I think it's at Walmart now and Walgreens, then your potential to pull, and again, these are retail prices, very, very slim that you can get a rare or mythic worth over $4. Next, we have the flagship, we have the swallower, and then we have the fortress at four, and the ceratops. So they're all about 99 cents. The fortress is a little bit more expensive, but again, like I said, there are many, many copies of the land out there, and unless you have a particular need for this type of land. Booster boxes are getting, so interestingly enough, I'll talk about this trait. Booster boxes are costing distributors more, but distributors are charging stores less, and stores are charging even less to the end consumer. So their profit margin is much tighter. All right, next we'll talk about Growing Rights of Ikamog, which is a very good card. It's $19 as a rare. I do not expect this. I mean, you look at the rest of the set. I don't believe this set is going to soak up a lot of value. Uh, the free Planeswalkers are all $19.99 right now. And outside the free Planeswalkers, the other Mythics are very met. And when your Mythics are met and your rares are kind of met and you're banking on pulling this card as a rare for 20 bucks. If this legendary enchantment goes down, I'm, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying a lot of product is going to be open, then you're kind of screwed. Because everything else is like not worth even $4. I mean, just take a look at this stuff. Like, If you were to buy a booster pack at MSRP, which is kind of what I'm looking at in terms of gambling, which would be the most common scenario because 
most booster packs I assume are bought by in Walmart or Target, Barnes and Nobles, places like this. So hard, so hard to get back your money. I mean, just not not possible. Um, now, unstable, the land, and a lot of, again, after rotation, a lot of these are just going to get annihilated in value. Just bulk, just bulky and bulk, bulk, bulk. So now we get the $10 or the $10 Registrar Alpha, which is good. Rampaging, and then you have Primal Amulet, and then you have Priest of Awakening. I mean, so few cards in this set are worth more than the $4.19 MSRP of a pack. Now, I know a set called Unstable is coming out, and I know that the land eventually will be worth $4.00. I, I may take like five to seven years, but eventually the land will be the land will only in unstable will only go up in price. So when you're talking about hmm, what pack would I rather open for four dollars and nineteen cents, it's not Ixlon. It is definitely not Ixlon. I mean, even like let's take the uh, eight dollar Rip Jar Raptor, which is a pricey card. I look at it and I say to myself, this has no modern playability. Like it just does not. Yeah, you just cannot play this. In my, it, it, you would be you would be laughed out of the convention center pretty much. At four, at four, like come on, like if, like people were doing like Carn Liberated, like Aldrazi stuff at four, like it's crazy, right? Um, our Death Shadow costs one, and it's bigger and better. Uh, next, we have the Rootbound Craig. What's I I kind of wish that whenever they add value in a set if they choose to do so they put it in the land because that's like the safest place to put it right just make good land people will buy the product but anyway you have 299 you have 149 and then you have 99 cents i'm not not i'm not saying that this is a bad set i'm just saying that at this point in time which is the apex this is the most valuable these cards will be for 95% of them ever pre-order on Star City Games which we can look at the price and we can laugh about it's not a good sign it's really not a good sign here you have a $4.99 it's not a great sign that all the non-foils cannot make back the value of a pack and I know what you're saying oh well you know you shouldn't expect it you know you should you should expect to lose value but not at such a high percentage right like the reason people open packs is because they want to get a card that is very expensive. Otherwise, they would just buy singles, right? They would be like, oh, I'll just buy singles. People want to get lucky. Uh, who doesn't want to get lucky? And this is not the set to do it. I mean, you have Spyglass at four. You have Swindle at a dollar. You have Sun Petal at 249 It's just very, it's very difficult for me to, um, with Unstable coming out and Iconic Masters and 25th Anniversary Masters, I, and if you have a limited budget, which I have a limited budget and I'm looking at what's coming out soon and a lot of stuff is coming out soon. I don't know if this is where you want to do it. I know a lot of you say, oh, well, what about playing standard? I don't know. I'm giving up standard. Like, I'll be quite honest with you. I'm probably going to buy lots of unstable because I like the fact that I get a consistent value from the pack. And I'm probably going to buy a ton of um, 25th anniversary. I I play a lot of gotcha games. And the gotcha games, this, this is a very, very common pattern. 25th anniversary has to be better than Iconic Masters because they're going to be out at the same time, pretty much. And why would anyone ever buy Iconic Masters? Or why would anyone buy 25th anniversary if Iconic Masters was better? It makes no sense. But if they have people buy Iconic Masters now, and then later, you know, later they could buy 25th anniversary, that kind of makes more sense. It's like, the Fire Emblem game where, you know, oh, here's a bikini banner. Oh, by the way, and then you, you spend a lot of money on a bikini banner, and then you get to the next banner, and it's also a bikini banner, but it's with even better characters. And you're like, oh, damn it. And then you have to put your credit card. 
So that's assume I, that's exactly what's going to happen in 25th anniversary. So I'm going to buy Unstable. I'm probably going to hold out for 25th anniversary and uh, hope for the best, right? Hope for the best. But I mean, these are pre-order prices. So I'm not saying like these are prices that are on Star City Games pre-order. That's insane that they're so low, and there's so many, and there's so many of bad ones of them. I mean, and and your ceiling is twenty dollars. That's your ceiling for a non-foil. I mean, again, I wouldn't come into this and expect, oh, I'm going to get this foil rare. I'm going to get this foil mythic. That just doesn't happen, right? Anyway, that is it. Um, hopefully, you guys have fun. I mean, if Ixalan is going to be a lot of fun, um, but you gotta. You gotta protect your wallet because something you're gonna get hit real hard later on. And I know a lot of you say, "Oh, I'll just buy Ixalan. I'm not gonna buy, you know, Iconic Masters or Unstable." I my gut feeling is a lot of people will think this way, and but when Unstable and Iconic Masters come out, they'll buy that too, and they'll be broke. Just FYI. Bye, guys.